Oh, look at this sophisticated fellow. <laughs> <laughs> you right, guys? I'm Tom. Um, I work on front of house at the Arch. And you're um, studying sports science, right? Yeah, yeah. I just finished my second year, so still got another year to go. Today we're going to do some core training. I like to write everything that I do down in my little book. Where is that book from? This book is from a shop in Covent Garden and it's Gryffindor because who doesn't love Harry Potter? So we're going to do what I would normally do for a core training session. Normally can fit this into about an hour. I think if you're training your core for more than an hour, you're doing something wrong. Everything is about core. Everything. You want to make sure that you can keep your feet on the wall, keep body tension. That is all anchored by your core. And we're not talking about just abs here. We're talking about your back, down to sort of your hip flexors and up to your chest as well. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go through front levers. Um, front lever is quite an advanced exercise, but you can definitely like scale it back so you, you can work up to doing a full front lever. I can't actually pull into it. I have to bring my knees up and push out. At some point, I want to be able to do a full front lever, but I'm, I'm still working towards it. If you're just starting out, you might want to start off with like two and work your way up over a number of weeks. Perfect. Cool. Show us that front Let's lever. Let's give it a go. Front lever is essentially, if you think about trying to do a plank, but off a bar on your front, you're essentially trying to get into this position with everything in a complete plank. It's really good for your abs, your hip flexes, your legs. It's really good for core tension. Oh, that's always hard. Trying to hold it maximally. So I think that was probably about five seconds. And then you get a stopwatch, start it off, and it gets to 45, you then try again. You know how I know you're good at training? You have a fucking stopwatch. <laughs> <laughs> if you had a whistle, you'd be the god of training. It's a bit loud in here. Yeah, have a whistle. We might bit, distract other people. <laughs> it's not so good. It's too nice. Oh, oh, oh! Look at that core. Gee, man, you are absolutely shredded right now. Is that so okay? So if you can only hold it for like two seconds, a second, probably what you want to do is bring it back to an easier level. So maybe with like a knee tucked really high or just both knees tucked and what you can do is like start just gently pushing one leg out knees come in get into the position and then just push one leg out really slowly really trying to push the hips up towards the sky try not to let them sag try and really push them up so that you're keeping that nice straight line throughout exercise number two is one that i nicked off instagram i saw mm -hmm. it and I think it's a great uh, variation on doing front levers again. What you do is you bring your knees up to your chest and then you're driving them out in front of you and basically doing a negative front lever. Yeah. I normally go sort of four reps and do four sets. That's a really good one for um, climbing as well because when you're sort of locking off and trying to flick your feet out, you want to be able to really hit the small footholds. It's a good one for training core for that. Tom, what time is it? It is superset time. Superset? What does that mean? Supersets are where you've got two exercises that are with opposing muscle groups. Yeah. So we're going to do six leg raises followed by six hyper extensions. It's getting all across your lower back here, which is really neglected in climbing. People think about just trying to force themselves into the wall. It's really important to avoid any sort of lower back injuries that we strengthen our lower and back. And it helps well. if you're on a computer all day. Yeah, massively as well. Yeah. Because yeah. you're like this. So, oh yeah, tell me about it. I do this a lot. What we're trying to do is not lift with our hip because that's just getting our hip flexor. What we want to do is lift at our pelvis so we're engaging our core as well. Then you take no break. What you want to do is, when you're down on the ground, you want to keep your nose right on the ground, hands behind the ears, and what you're aiming to do is not raise your head up, you're aiming to raise your shoulders up and keep your head in line with your shoulders. Um, if you're just raising your head up like this, it's just going to get an awful headache. <laughs> it's not going to be good. And now you take a break. And now you take your 45 second rest. The rest of the exercises we're going to do are all supersets. We're going to do a leg to bar on row. So what we do is we hang underneath the bar, bring our legs up, and then we're going to do six bar rows and we're going to drop down and do 10 ring press ups straight away. Again, make this easier by like having the bar closer to the ground and just doing the rows like that. 
So this is going to be uh, 6 and 10. We do slightly more press-ups because I'm much stronger at doing press-ups than doing the rows. Okay. So you want to work again to like slight fatigue. What's it called? Row? Leg, leg to bar row. Leg to um, bar it's row. a variation on doing rows. Basically makes it a little bit harder. You try and get your legs above the bar and then you sink your hips down to 90 degrees. So your legs 90 degrees with the body. And then you're aiming to bring the bar to your chest, keeping the elbows nice and tucked in. Um, if any of you have ever been to the gym, you might have seen people do like rows with like an Olympic bar where you bring it like this. Mm -hmm. It's essentially the same thing, but more specific to climbing because when you're in a roof, you might be having to pull yourself in while your legs are cut so you can get them on. So, it's nice. kind of a common theme with a lot of the exercises. I've tried to think about what could be applicable to climbing. Cool. What does the wonderful book of wizardry tell you to do next, young sir? <laughs> so we're going to do uh, ring rollouts and then we're going to go into band rotations. Um, rollouts are like, you've got a wasp on your camera. Go away. Yeah. So the rollouts you can do either on rings or you could do them with a wheel or you could do them just on your hands, bring yourself out, bring yourself back in. And then the band rotations, you just have to have like an anchor point and a, um, and a theraband. Rollout is really good for building core tension and a little bit of shoulder stability. And the rotation is really good because your core does two things, rotation and anti-rotation. And what we're gonna do is work on getting that rotation element. So your ring rolls, you want to make sure you're engaging with your core, so really try and suck your belly in so you're engaging. Um, you're holding on to the rings. I'm going to bring my feet quite close to where the anchor point is up here. And then I'm just going to go out. Hold for like two seconds out and bring back to a press up. Our band anchored in, you want to bring it out so it reaches our core and it's under tension. Both hands on, and the shoulders back, and we're twisting. We're on the last superset. Triset, it's a triset. Oh, tri superset is two, triset is three. Um, Surely a triset should be like a super duper set. So when we're doing ring rows, um, it's all about bicep and lat. Mm -hmm. When we're doing dips, it's about your pecs and your triceps. And then when we're doing crunches, it's about your abs again. Cool. So let's do this. Great thing about rings is, again, you can self-regulate. So if I'm feeling really fatigued, I can do my rows up here. If I'm not feeling so fatigued, I can do them down here. And what we're looking to do, go up the scapula and then pull <laughs> and finally crunches bottom when you're doing crunches to keep this bit of your back this lower back engaged with the ground and then rest two to three minutes. Oh. <laughs> that was some really good information you dropped. It's crazy oh, how much you know. Like, oh what? man, I'm, I would say I know like a little bit um, and like there's loads of information out there so you guys should go and try and get knowledge up on that. I would say what I've given you here is literally just a starting point for you to go out and get more. Yeah. One thing I would say is like consistency is key when it comes to training. So if you're training like twice a week, if you then drop your training amount to once a week, you might stay where you are, but you're not gonna get any stronger. So make sure that you're like doing, you know, one, two sessions consistently a week. And also keep notes on what you're doing so that then you can go back and be like, ah, oh, so three weeks ago, I did two sets of this. Maybe I should ramp it up a bit. That'll get your progressive overload in there. So this particular workout I'll do once a week and then I'll do another one again 
and then I'll climb like two, three times a week, so five times in total. Comment below if you want to see more training videos from Tom. He does a bunch of other workouts. Tom's also available for lessons at the Arj, so if you want to be taught by this master. Technique lessons. Technique, technique lessons, lessons if you want. He'll drop some knowledge as well. <laughs> cool guys. Cheers Thanks guys. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. Bye Tom. Bye.